Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today is a monumental day for the wireless industry, specifically more for Verizon, but eventually it will be large, uh, big event for AT&T as well. Today is the day that new unlimited Verizon plans are launching. Now you might say, what's the big deal? All plans these days seem to be unlimited. Well, Verizon is finally releasing its uh, 5G Get More plan, which is meant to be very competitive with Magenta Max and AT&T Elite in that your plan can't slow down based on how much smartphone data you use during network congestion. So if you're at a rock concert or a busy shopping mall or something like that and you've uh, used 100 gigs of data, you're not going to slow down. Or uh, like older uh, Verizon plans that had a 50 gigabyte soft cap, meaning uh, after that 50 gigs, you were subject to network priority uh, based on congestion. So uh, C-band is delayed. C-band, uh, what is it? What does it do? Uh, well, C-band is going to allow Verizon to expand its ultra wideband service that produces the crazy speeds you're used to, but on a larger scale. C-band won't be quite as fast as uh, millimeter wave that they were using for ultra wideband before, uh, but it will come close. So uh, ultra wideband using millimeter wave and C-band is going to be uh, starting on J uh, January 19th of 2022. So <clears throat> first we're going to take a little dive into what is C-band and what will the speeds look like. Then we're going to talk about how the controversy and delay got started. Uh, and uh, then I'll go into talking about the new rate plans for you uh, that Verizon is launching today. So let's take a look. Uh, what will C-band do? So C-band uh, currently consists of 60 mega megahertz of airwaves sandwiched between its current 4G allocation and uh, the 5 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi band. I don't like how they've written that because it the, the two kind of would confuse me if I was an average consumer. Uh, when it flips on, it will at least double the bandwidth available to most Verizon devices. Now, 60 megahertz of airwaves is just the beginning. Uh, Verizon has 140 megahertz on average nationwide of this C-band spectrum. Uh, it's in the 3 gigahertz range, so like uh, I think it's like 3.4 to 3.8 uh, or 9 gigahertz. So keep that in mind. That might be important for later when we talk about why there was a controversy around it. Uh, Verizon's earlier fast system millimeter wave has incredible speed and massive capacity, but it covers a little area. Uh, depending on obstructions and things like that, millimeter wave can go anywhere from like a couple thousand feet to like a couple blocks. So not very wide coverage, but the speeds are incredible. In fact, on the screen right now, I'll throw up a clip from a video on my channel earlier, and I'll put a link to it above here. Um, I was on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey, and uh, Atlantic City does have some millimeter wave uh, ultra wideband coverage right now, and the speeds are incredible. Um, as you'll see in that video, uh, I was getting anywhere from like two to almost four gigabits per second down. That's like double and triple the best plans I can get from my local cable provider. Um, <clears throat> so... Uh, if you're in an area that's regularly congested, that'll be a relief. Uh, that's kind of an understatement. Uh, you know, this C-band is going to unleash so much capacity uh, that it'll be a non-issue most of the time. So uh, they're also uh, C-band will also allow Verizon to offer better home internet options. So um, just like the T-Mobile home internet videos I have on my channel, you'll get a box from Verizon and it'll give you speeds... Uh, they claim uh, it's going to be around 300 megabits per second. So the two service plans will be a $50 a month plan, uh, $25 if you have a certain plan like Do More uh, or Get More, the, get, the new Get More, uh, 5G Get More and 5G Do More, 
with a 300 megabit per second hard throttle and the $70 plan or 35 plan with no throttle but advertised as up to one gigabit per second. So uh, neither one will have a data cap. So I would probably spring for the 35 because I, I don't want to be limited in my speeds. So that's just a quick look at what C-band is and what it'll allow them to do. Uh, and then uh, there's this Tom's Guide article talking about recently they turned on a test site in Los Angeles uh, and the test reviewer was hitting peak speeds of 1.6 gigabits per second um, in this area that they enabled C-band for testing. Uh, I think it was just for a day or a weekend. Um, and even, uh, I think it says here in the article, uh, even deep in parking, like a parking garage and elevators, they were still getting um, a couple hundred megabits per second down, which is is truly impressive. And the other thing to keep in mind is that this spectrum, uh, this is just the beginning. This is just that initial 60 megahertz we talked about earlier. The satellite operators that were using the spectrum before still have more spectrum to clear between now and the end of 2023. So I remember reading another article that once this spectrum is cleared, um, that 1.6 gig peak is going to turn more into like two and a half or three. Uh, so just incredible speeds that you can get out of C-band and out of the, the service. Um, <clears throat> so now let's talk about the controversy. Um, the FAA and the airline industry in general has had a real tough time uh, with the fact that AT&T and Verizon are going to be launching service in this spectrum. Um, I'm not going to bore you with too many details about it, but basically, um, you know, like I was saying earlier, C-band is operating in like the 3.4 or 3.5 gigahertz range all the way up to like 3.8 or 3.9. Uh, and uh, the FAA's concern is mainly that radio altimeters on planes that basically beam a signal down to the ground are operating in about the 4.1 uh, to 4.7 gigahertz range, if I remember correctly. So uh, they were worried that uh, some of the older radio altimeters were going to not be properly shielded and stay within their respective spectrum uh with this 5G service operating uh, so close to it. But, um, you know, a lot of people that kind of follow the wireless industry or are involved with it um, are kind of upset about that, myself included, because there's going to initially be something like 400 megahertz of guard band separating this C-band spectrum from these radio altimeters. Um, and also the, the FAA kind of waited until the last minute of the last hour to raise these concerns with the government um, and the FCC. So, you know, this is delaying a critical spectrum that people have been waiting for um, to really boost 5G and kind of bring it up to the expectations that I think the public and the operators have for it. Um, so uh, this article here from The Verge is, uh, you know, in a standoff that's pitting Verizon, AT&T and the FCC against the FAA, the airline ins industry over the two carriers plans to upgrade 5G wireless service. You know, a lot of these articles that talk about this, this debate and this problem just kind of lump 5G service into it, making it seem like it's all 5G service that's creating this, this problem or this issue uh, when it's not. It's really just the C-band that the FAA uh, and the DOT have a problem with. Um, so... Uh, and this article is saying that the uh, celebration scheduled for 1 p.m. on Tuesday, uh, that was yesterday, uh, was canceled, but it actually went on. It actually happened, and uh, they just didn't go into a lot of details about when C-Band was going to be turned on. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to open Twitter there. Um, so basically, the, the carriers, the gist of this article is that the carriers have uh, agreed to delay it for another two weeks after delaying it for a full month, 
uh, in exchange for sort of a guarantee from the FAA and the airline industry that they won't pursue any further delays if there are no, um, you know, no big technical issues pop up, which I don't think they will. So I think we're kind of in the clear after this delay uh, as far as getting the Spectrum online goes. Um, so, you know, the the carrier spent a lot of money buying the Spectrum. Between AT&T and Verizon, it was $70 billion, with most of it being spent on by Verizon. Um, and then, of course, the other issue, the reason that the carriers are pushing so hard to get this Spectrum online is that T-Mobile already has a pretty substantial lead when it comes to not only deploying uh, low-band 5G, but their uh, service that they're calling ultra capacity, which uses 2.5 gigahertz. So, um, you know, a lot of even smaller towns now have this 5G ultra capacity from T-Mobile when Verizon hasn't even launched low band in a lot of these places and where AT&T has, but it doesn't perform really great. So, um, you know, the argument is, hey, we spent all this money and we're at a huge competitive disadvantage right now. Um, we deserve fair treatment with the spectrum that we paid all this money for, not to mention early clearing costs they paid to get the spectrum online even sooner in a lot of bigger markets, uh, the top 46 markets. So now let's turn to uh, these new plans that Verizon is putting out. Um, like I said earlier, they had their 5G Ultra Show today, uh, Ultra Show like ultra wideband that was streamed on uh, YouTube and other streaming platforms. So, uh, you know, they had a lot of big name celebrities like Elizabeth Banks uh, pushing the 5G uh, home internet that they're really going to be selling uh, via this C-band service and the millimeter wave service. Uh, so let's put the new plans up on the screen right now. And I'll kind of talk about them. Um, there's going to be uh, the plans names are not changing a whole lot. They just kind of stuck the word 5G in front of the old plan names. So you have uh, 5G start, 5G play more, 5G do more, and 5G get more. Um, now, as you can see on the screen, I've kind of highlighted some of the major changes to the plan. Uh, the first three plans, Start, Play More, and Do More, didn't really get a whole lot of changes other than adding a lot more hotspot. Um, and uh, Do More gets one day of travel pass per month that stacks up to 12 uh, months. So you can have up to 12 days of travel pass banked, or at least that's how the wording makes it sound. It's not real clear, uh, based on what I've seen, if those 12 travel passes will roll over to the next year, but I'm assuming they do not. Uh, and then the biggest changes, the most exciting ones to me, because it's finally giving uh, Verizon customers a really, really super competitive offer uh, plan-wise, is the 5G Get More. Um, the 5G Get More, uh, besides already having all the streaming services like Disney, Hulu, ESPN, um, and Apple Music, is now also getting the one day of travel pass per month stackable up to 12 months. And it's getting uh, unlimited premium network access. So just looking at this chart, you might get a little confused and say, well, hey, Frank, they all seem to say premium network access. Well, uh, in the fine print, uh, the Play More, Do More are going to have 50 gigabytes of premium network access before you're subject to network priority. Uh, meaning, again, if you're at a rock concert or a special event or something like that, and there's tons of people competing for the same cell phone uh, network access, you could get slowed down if you're past 50 gigs or slow down in general if you're on the Start Unlimited. Uh, there's no priority data on Start. But now customers on the Get More plan are going to have unlimited premium network access. So you cannot slow down based on how much uh, smartphone data you've used and how much demand is on the network. So these are phenomenal new updates to these plans. Um, and it appears the pricing is staying the same as the previous generation plan. In fact, I've read that customers who are on the older equivalent of these plans are going to be automatically migrated over 
to these new plans at some point this month. So uh, very cool updates. Uh, if you guys found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button down below. I really appreciate you guys subscribing. It really uh, it makes me happy and it helps the channel. So thank you. And I uh, hope you guys have a great 2022.